In addition, as you've just heard, we are recording this webinar. I've had a number of questions already from folks asking about this webinar, if it's being recorded, and if any of the information or slides will be available. So yes, the webinars are recorded. They can be found at www.alsa.org under the Care Services tab, and they should be posted within 24 hours. Again, we're number of incoming calls. People are still joining us, so we'll give them just about another minute, and then we'll begin. And we are now at the top of the hour, so let's begin. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. Uh, this is the Living with ALS Educational Topic Call webinar series. This series of monthly webinars was designed to bring information of a practical nature to people living with ALS. Our topic for July is really quite timely, uh, Nature Integrated Respiratory Care for ALS Patients and Caregivers. While the ALS Association does not endorse any specific treatment, equipment, product, or service, we are certainly committed to sharing information regarding ALS-related care and quality of life in an educational format. For the convenience of those unable to join us today, this re webinar will be recorded, and you may access the recorded link at www.alsa.org or by contacting your local chapter. Today's webinar is related to a new category of ventilators approved by the FDA in 2018. The features incorporated in the multifunction ventilator may be beneficial for people diagnosed with ALS. Our guest speaker sharing information about the Voxin multifunction ventilator is Jason Sismondo. Mr. Sismondo holds a Bachelor of Science degree. He's a registered respiratory therapist with 10 years of critical care experience ECMO experience and ventilation with non-invasive as well as invasive ventilator modalities. As a note of disclosure, Jason is the lead clinical specialist at Ventec Life Systems. Jason, thank you for carving time out of your day to share information about this new category of ventilators with us. I believe you are on the call and you have access to advance those slides at your convenience. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, my pleasure, and I just wanted to say thank you, everybody, for joining us today uh, for our topic of integrated respiratory care for the ALS patients and uh, caregivers. Um, this next slide is just a, a brief table of contents. Uh, I will give an introduction about Ventec Life Systems on a high level. Uh, then we will also talk about some of the traditional devices that are commonly associated uh, with respiratory care. Uh, we will go over um, Voxin, the first multifunctional ventilator, and then we'll also share some of the benefits of uh, integrated care. Uh, we'll touch uh, briefly about uh, reimbursement and payment options, and then lastly, we will hold uh, all, the uh, all the questions uh, till the end of the talk. Uh, a brief intro about me. Thank you, Cynthia. My, uh, my name is Jason Sesmundo. I am a registered respiratory therapist. Uh, I've gained all my clinical experience at the University of Washington Medical Center, uh, where I was a ECMO specialist. Uh, more recently, through the last four years, I've been a lead clinical specialist at Ventec Life Systems. Uh, my job at Ventec has been to lead a team of clinicians, uh, and our sole role and responsibility has been to implement Voxin. Uh, in the field, and that goes from the hospital to the home. Uh, this is a picture of me that I just took last week at the uh, Gleason House in New Orleans. Uh, this is myself and Miss Maxine. 
she is on box in there uh, with our bi-level volume targeted via uh, nasal pillows. Um, so Voxin, when you look at it, can truly benefit patients uh, across the continuum of care, but if we look specifically at the ALS patient population, uh, so typically uh, your patients are going to require some form of ventilation, whether that's uh, invasive or non-invasive ventilation, and that's where we look at Voxin, because Voxin allows that patient to, uh, to grow with them as their disease progress continues. Uh, so later on, they may or may not require a cough therapy machine, or they may or may not require a suction machine, uh, and Voxin uh, integrates all five of those therapies uh, into this one machine. So it truly grows with the patient uh, as their disease progresses. Uh, this next slide uh, is just a high-level overview about Ventec Life Systems. Uh, this is uh, what I like to think about the first team uh, at Ventec. Uh, since this photo has been taken, our team has grown uh, drastically. Uh, but we are a company uh, based out of the United States. We are actually uh, in Bothell, Washington. Our founder is uh, Doug DeVries, who created uh, Voxin. Uh, uh, some of you are familiar with the LTV. Uh, Doug was uh, imp uh, instrumental in developing the LTV, which is, uh, was created in the late 90s, uh, and is still used uh, worldwide today. Um, the team has, um, has a history of developing over 18 devices, uh, that have been FDA cleared uh, and in the industry uh, as we know it today. Next slide. So this next slide uh, just highlights some of the uh, five therapies that are traditionally associated uh, in respiratory care. Uh, historically, uh, about 92% of uh, ventilator patients will need at least two of these devices uh, uh, in addition to the ventilator. Um, eventually, uh, an ALS patient could need all five therapies, just depending on, on where they're at and their disease pro progress and, uh, you know, how healthy or, or not healthy they are. Uh, but if we look at all five of these machines, so we have a ventilator, we have an oxygen concentrator, we have a cough assist machine, we have a suction machine, and we have a nebulizer machine. Each one of these machines, when we look at them separately, they ha are a different operating system. They require different power cords. They require different batteries. Uh, they require different circuits. So if we, if we think about these five, five machines separately, it, provide, it, it, it creates a burden uh, to both the patient and the caregiver with how to manage all five of these different machines. Uh, and, and that's where Voxin uh, is, is going to help us out. Uh, when, when you take a look at uh, each one of these machines, that V, that O, that C, the S, and the N, uh, that's how we get the name of Voxin, and that stands for ventilation, oxygen, cough, suction, and nebulizer. So this next slide talks about some of the uh, traditional challenges uh, that can be associated with your traditional devices that are on the market. So when, when, when the engineers and the team was actually creating Voxin, uh, they actually went out into the field and, um, and they talked to patients and they talked to caregivers. And, and what they were doing was they were actually asking them, you know, what are the challenges uh, that, that you face uh, in your day-to-day -day life with, with interacting with all five of these different machines? Uh, and they really broke it down into these three categories. And uh, the first category is, is complex and time-consuming. Uh, as I stated earlier, I'm a respiratory therapist. Uh, you know, I, I have an education in respiratory care, and, and I've, I've worked in the industry for a number of years. And so it's throughout my career I learned how to operate all five of these different machines. Um, but uh, for a patient uh, that is newly diagnosed with uh, ALS or some sort of disease process, or for a caregiver, uh, it's, it's a big burden that uh, is put on them to actually to learn all of these machines uh, in a matter of weeks or a matter of months when they're getting ready to be discharged from the hospital. Um, and it, 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 it creates some undue stress for the caregivers. Um, when you think about it, now they're actually managing five different machines, and it really takes them away from actually doing what they're there to do, and that's actually to take care of their loved one uh, 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 and, and the patient. Um, the second challenge is uh, it's this limited, this limited portability. Uh, so, so when we look back uh, at, at Doug's story, Doug DeVries, uh, so Doug's dad actually had ALS, uh, and he chose not to go on a ventilator. Um, but when Doug was creating and thinking about Voxin, he actually went out into the field and, uh, and he saw the LTV and he went into people's homes 
and he saw basically they had a little mini ICU set up. Uh, they had their ventilator, which he made the LTV, and it was small and it was portable, but then they were still tethered to the bedside with the oxygen concentrator. They were tethered with the, the cough assist machine, the suction machine. Um, you know, all five of the, these separate therapies, they can weigh anywhere up to 55 pounds. And again, they have all the circuits that you need to worry about, all the battery cords that you need to worry about. Uh, so you're truly limited uh, with the traditional therapies that are currently on the market with what you want to do and how much mobility you're going to have. And, and that's one of the challenges that uh, Boxin is able to help overcome. Um, and the third, the third challenge of traditional devices um, is the difficulty between switching between therapies. Uh, uh, specifically, you know, when we think about ventilation um, and cough therapy, um, as, a, as a clinician, uh, uh, you know, it, it's ingrained us to, uh, you don't want to disconnect someone from life support machine. Uh, and that's what we're asking people to do historically uh, before Vox, and that's what we're asking people to do on a day-to-day -day basis. We're asking you to disconnect your loved one to disconnect your patient from life support machine and hook them up to this cough assist machine. And, and that can take a whole, you know, that can take anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Uh, the challenges of providing cough therapy are numerous, uh, but some of the big ones that just stand out is first you need to find the cough assist machine. Uh, if you're in, in the home environment, maybe it's in the closet somewhere. Uh, if you're in the facility or the hospital, well, Maybe you need to find it, or maybe it's in another patient's room, and you need to clean it and put another circuit on and, and take it into the patient's room. Um, and and all, that, all that time adds up. Meanwhile, the, the patient is sitting there with secretions in their lungs, or you know, they want to they, they clear their airway, but they can't because it, it's so time-consuming uh, to implement cough therapy. Um, and, and that's one of the things that Boxman's touch button cough therapy is able to utilize. And, and we'll, touch, we'll, we'll touch base a little bit more on this uh, as we progress through the slides. So this, this next slide here uh, is, 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 is pretty, um, pretty amazing. When you, when you look at Voxin, again, so we replaced all five of these, these, these therapies that are on the left-hand side, um, which your ventilation is right there, your oxygen concentrator, your cough assist machine, your suction machine. That's 55 pounds worth of equipment. Um, that Voxin is able to replace with one device that weighs 18 pounds. Uh, it's one machine to work. Uh, it's one software to work. It's one circuit to utilize. Uh, it, it's, it's not only is it smaller, but it's also simplified, uh, and it provides uh, integration in uh, respiratory care that provides clinical benefits as well. Um, this next slide uh, is we're going to talk a little bit more about integrated um, respiratory care. So Voxin is the first multifunctional ventilator uh, that is on the market. It was designed to work from the hospital to the home and on your, patient's, uh, five, your pediatric patients five kilograms and above. Uh, now Voxin's fully customizable, so if a patient doesn't need one of the therapies, they don't have to have one of the therapies, and vice versa. As the patient's disease progress continues, Voxin can grow with them. So if they're needing one of the therapies, well, we can implement one of those therapies that they will, that they will need. Um, just of note, Voxin was cleared uh, by the FDA in uh, April of uh, 2017. So when we talk about the V portion of Voxin, the ventilation portion, uh, we're talking about a critical care ventilator. Uh, so Voxin meets that ISO standard for critical care, and that means that Voxin needs to deliver, accurately deliver, uh, ventilation breaths, both volume and pressure, over a bell curve and hit over 3,200 data points, both in like extreme shock, extreme temperatures, and accurately deliver uh, those ventilation breaths. Um, the modes of ventilation that Voxin is able to provide is comprehensive. Uh, Voxin can do all your traditional invasive, uh, non-invasive, and mouthpiece modes of ventilation. Uh, and then, then leak compensation. Uh, Voxin's algorithm has a powerful leak compensation that, uh, that allows to deliver accurate ventilation uh, in one comfortable breath. This next slide talks about uh, Voxin's internal oxygen concentrator. So the internal concentrator 
is, is capable of delivering anywhere between 0.5 all the way up to 6 liters of O2 flow equivalent, which is about 40% FiO2 for the average adult male. Uh, Voxen, uh, in, in addition to the internal concentrator, uh, Voxen is also able to provide oxygen from an external high pressure source or an external low pressure source. So that is uh, three ways of uh, delivering oxygen uh, to your patients uh, via Voxen. And the way Voxen delivers oxygen uh, is through the oxygen direct system. Uh, this oxygen direct system uh, allows uh, Voxen to be more energy efficient. Uh, and, uh, and to run three times uh, more energy efficient than traditional concentrators uh, that are on the market uh, currently right now. Uh, Voxen also has a uh, onboard FiO2 monitoring, which, is, uh, which allows us to accurately uh, monitor patients' oxygen uh, delivery. Uh, touch button cough therapy. So, as I was saying earlier, Voxen integrates uh, a cough, cough therapy uh, being able to deliver, be delivered in seconds uh, rather than minutes, so you no longer need to grab a whole separate machine and, uh, and bring it in the room and disconnect your loved one uh, from a life support machine, hook them up to the cough therapy. Uh, all you need to do with Voxen is simply touch uh, the cough therapy icon and it will deliver that therapy in seconds uh, rather than minutes. Um, the other thing that Voxen is able to utilize uh, doing cough therapy is just one circuit. So you no longer will need to switch uh, between different uh, uh, circuits uh, to provide uh, ventilation and cough therapy. So you can utilize uh, that one circuit uh, to provide that cough therapy. Uh, and this last bullet point is breast sink. Uh, so I, I know some of the traditional challenges when providing cough therapy is actually uh, syncing up with the patient and, and, and you know, you're like, are you ready? Inhale, one, two, three, four, and exhale, one, two, three, four. Uh, and something like that. Uh, but with Voxin, uh, they have what's called breast sync. Um, and so what breast sync does is when you actually initiate cough therapy, uh, Voxin just doesn't slam the patient with a big cough breath. Uh, it will actually monitor the breathing and uh, it'll actually trigger the cough therapy at a natural point in the breath cycle. Uh, just like you and I are able to trigger a natural cough, well, that's the idea behind breath therapy. So, well, now a patient uh, on, on a ventilator can trigger uh, a natural cough with, uh, with breast sink. So suction. So uh, Voxen uh, incorporates a onboard suction pump, uh, and, and what that means is uh, it, it's able to deliver uh, consistent high flows uh, uh, that uh, are very synonymous what uh, most people are used to with uh, hospital-grade suction uh, that they get coming out of the wall. Um, Voxen's uh, hospital-grade suction is up to three times quieter than your traditional suction pumps uh, that are historically extremely loud uh, and, and, and noisy. Um, and the other thing that Voxen has is this uh, 300 milliliter travel suction canister, uh, which allows for uh, suction on the go. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times uh, we've been out in the field and, and we ask people, uh, well, what do you think about, what do you like about Voxen? And uh, the biggest thing is they, they like the suction pump. And we're like, well, you don't like the oxygen concentrator? They're like, we like the suction pump. Uh, and uh, if you can think about it, uh, uh, suction is, is one of those things when you need it, you need it now. And uh, to have suction available at the fingertips wherever you go uh, is truly a valuable therapy to have uh, on an integrated uh, device. And the other really nice thing about this travel suction canister is it's actually colored a nice uh, gray. And, and, and that's, to, that's to hide the color of the secretion so that uh, so the patients can have a little bit of a dignity when they're out, in the, out, in the, um, out on, on an adventure or something like that. So this next slide uh, is, is talking about the uh, high-performance nebulizer that Voxen uh, offers. Uh, uh, the first thing to talk about is uh, so Voxen's nebulizer will actually compensate for the flow uh, and it'll actually deliver uh, a unified breath. Um, uh, which is very, which could be very comfortable for for your patients. Um, the other thing that's uh, compensating for that flow does is uh, for you clinicians out there uh, on the call is as is, is all you, you all may know that uh, historically with other uh, portable ventilation devices that are out there, uh, anytime you add external flow, 
uh, you typically can get some nuisance alarms and uh, it can be quite uncomfortable uh, for the patient. Uh, and, and that's where Voxman is able to actually compensate for those flows from the nebulizer and deliver that, uh, that unified uh, breath to the patient. Um, the really nice thing about the, the uh, internal nebulizer as well is it's uh, programmable. So the clinician or the caregiver can actually set a duration for how long, depending on whatever medication they're giving, uh, they can set a duration for how long they want that nebulizer to run, uh, whether that's 20 to 30 minutes as an example, and after that time frame is over, uh, the nebulizer will automatically turn off. And the last bullet point that I would just like to highlight uh, is, is the noise muffling technology that Voxin uh, is, is able to provide. Uh, when we think about uh, nebulizers, historically, uh, they are quite loud. And uh, when you're trying to have a conversation with somebody and you have a nebulizer uh, going off inside the room, uh, you know it because you can hear the nebulizer, uh, whereas the nebulizer uh, and the noise muffling technology within Voxin uh, is two times uh, quieter than traditional nebulizer systems uh, that are on the market. Uh, th this next slide talks about the monitors and the therapy tracker that Voxin is able to provide. So you have to imagine now after you provide uh, all five of these therapies, well, you, you need to have some sort of way of monitoring your patient. Um, and, the, and the first uh, picture that's on the right-hand side over here, uh, that's our nine patient feedback parameters. Um, so uh, for your clinicians, that's your, your PIPs, your MAPs, uh, your ID ratio, and so forth. Uh, and, and these are fully customizable, so you can match it uh, to kind of mimic your flow sheet uh, if, you, if you have a flow sheet. Uh, and then your control settings, that's the picture right below your monitors, uh, uh, your, your, um, your nine patient feedback per parameters, your control settings. Uh, so those are going to be actually your ventilator settings. And so uh, that just allows the clinician or a caregiver uh, to get a real high-level overview of what they're looking at when they see Voxin. And uh, so you can display your actual respiratory rate, your actual tidal volume, uh, uh, alarms if you want to throw some alarms inside there. So that's what's displayed right there. Um, so the, the, the next bullet point is your waveforms. So uh, Voxin utilizes waveforms. Uh, I'm a little bit of a, a geek in the sense that uh, I like to look at waveforms. I feel like they are an underutilized tool. Uh, but waveforms can be a very valuable tool so you can uh, see a lot that's going on with your patient. Uh, and then lastly on the slide is uh, our therapy tracker. So uh, Voxin can actually monitor up to 7,300 events. Uh, uh, those events can be downloadable, so uh, providers uh, can, get an act, can get access and see what, uh, what, what, uh, what all those events actually were. Uh, and, and the therapy tracker can be truly beneficial so that you can you can see everything going on with, within Boxin, which is going to uh, tell you what's going on uh, with, with your patient as well. Uh, touch button cough therapy. Uh, so uh, again, I, I think uh, a cough therapy is, is a very, very un underutilized tool uh, because of uh, the, the challenges associated with it. Um, but for those of you that do not know what cough therapy is, uh, it's historically, it's a separate machine uh, that uh, is able to stimulate a cough. And, and so the way it does that is it, it, it forces uh, a large volume of air in based on some pressures. Uh, and then in seconds, it reverses that airflow and, and goes into a negative and then kind of sucks that up. And that helps to, to get those secretions up to the larger airways uh, so that we can uh, suck them out. Uh, a cough therapy uh, is, is truly beneficial for a whole host of patient populations, but uh, uh, the neuromuscular patient population, uh, specifically ALS as well, can truly benefit um, from cough therapy, uh, especially integrated cough therapy. So one of the benefits uh, that we look at is, uh, is reduced anxiety. Uh, and and, and so, so what does that mean? Um, so a couple of months ago, I was over in, in, um, in Utah, and, and I was taking care of a patient that was a high spinal cord injury patient, uh, so he needed to be on a ventilator. Uh, consistently, and uh, but he needed cough therapy as well, and, uh, and 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 I was like, well, why does it cause you anxiety? And he told me it's because he has clinicians, and and he knows the clinicians that come in, and sometimes they just uh, they'll disconnect him from the ventilator, and then they'll hook him up to the cough assist, but then they forget to hook him back up to the ventilator in a timely manner. Uh, so you you can imagine that uh, 
that uh, getting cough therapy by specific clinicians in this case can, can cause a lot of anxiety uh, for this patient. And, and, and that's one of those things that uh, Voxin can help alleviate uh, because, again, you no longer need to disconnect the patient um, to provide cough therapy. All you need to do is touch, touch a button. Uh, saving time. So what does that mean? So, so as I said earlier, Voxin is able to provide cough therapy in seconds uh, rather than minutes. So you, you don't need to go track another machine down um, uh, uh, to do this cough therapy. So you can actually just press that, that C icon and deliver cough therapy, uh, and, and it happens in seconds. Um, the other thing that uh, Voxin's uh, touch button cough therapy was designed was to help to reduce uh, the risk of infection. Uh, by, needingly, by, uh, by uh, needing to frequently uh, disconnect the patient uh, from the ventilator. So, so by not having to disconnect them from the ventilator, you're not opening up that circuit uh, for possible uh, infections, uh, you know, that, that they may be floating around. Uh, increase in compliance. Uh, you know, if, if we like to think that um, if you're able to provide cough therapy uh, in a simplified way, uh, by just touching a button, then uh, we like to think that you'll be able to, to, to increase the amount of compliance that cough therapies have done uh, without having to track a whole separate machine down. Uh, this next bullet point is humidity, humidity with cough. So Voxin is the first system that allows us to deliver uh, cough therapy uh, with a humidification. And what this picture shows right here is, um, and the way it works is um, there's some one-way valves inside there. Uh, and so during insufflation, uh, one of those valves uh, opens up and allows air uh, to bypass that humidified water and then go to the patient. Uh, and then during exufflation, the other valve opens and a valve closes and allows air to bypass that water uh, and, and then exit out of the device so that you don't get any water uh, going back uh, to the device, and so that's humid humid humidity with cough therapy on Voxin via the humidifier bypass. Um, the other thing that Voxin and touch button cough therapy is able to do is to uh, maintain your patient's oxygen saturation. And, 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 and put simply, uh, Voxin is the only system uh, when connected to external high pressure that allows uh, a patient to have uh, supplemental oxygen during inhalation. Uh, for instance, you could hyperoxygenate a patient uh, when you're connected to external high pressure uh, uh, prior to doing cough therapy and while cough therapy is actually running, um, which is typically not associated with what's available on the market um, uh, right now. Um, cough therapy, uh, touch button cough therapy with Voxin is, uh, is, is uninterrupted ventilation. And, and what that means is, is when you have your patient and they're on, on a ventilator, and when you do cough therapy with Voxin, they go from a ventilation breath, they go to cough therapy for the duration of that cough therapy, and then they go right back into ventilation. So it's truly uninterrupted ventilation, and the patient is supported by a breath uh, throughout the whole process. Um, so that's what we're talking about when uh, uninterrupted uh, ventilation. So who's using Voxin out there? So ALS patients across the country uh, in facilities and in homes uh, are just some examples of who's using Voxin. Uh, these are some pictures of the Team Gleason House uh, down in New Orleans uh, celebrating Halloween uh, last October. Uh, I had the opportunity to go down there and uh, transition all the residents over uh, uh, from their traditional devices over to Voxin, and at the time that uh, we were there, it was Halloween, and so it was really special uh, because they, uh, they actually um, dressed all the residents up in different Halloween costumes, and then they had, different, they had kids come in from the community and uh, do some trick-or-treating with the, uh, the, 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 the residents there that, uh, that have ALS that are on Voxin. Um, but Team Gleason, uh, they've had the opportunity to leverage the latest technology uh, which allows uh, ALS patients to live uh, the most independent life that they can have uh, considering um, where they're at with their disease um, progress. So benefits of integrated care. So, so what is that? So it's a whole host of things, but uh, 
One of them uh, with Voxin is that it's simple. So you only have one circuit to worry about. You only have one device to learn, uh, but it's also it's mobile. So you, your, Voxin is 70% lighter than all the traditional therapies that are currently available on the market. Uh, you have nine hour, up to nine hours of onboard battery life, uh, but it's also care changing. Uh, and, and, and what I was just talking about, uninterrupted ventilation, that's care changing than what we're normally used to seeing. Um, it's, it's designed to reduce the risk of infection. So you have one device to monitor, you have one touch to operate, uh, your cough therapy, and you have one circuit for all therapies. So uh, it's, it's truly, it's simple, uh, it's mobile, and it's uh, care changing. So what are some of the care benefits of Voxin? So when we look at it, Voxin was designed to accomplish uh, the following care as a goal. So one of those is increased patient caregiver and mobility. Uh, as we know, uh, most patients today that are not on Voxin and they're on your traditional devices, uh, mo most of the time they, they don't ever leave the house. And if they do leave the house, uh, it's only to go from, typically it's to go from the, from the home to the doctor's office or from the home uh, to the hospital. Uh, and, and with that brings a burden. So they typically need to think about, well, what, the, what therapy am I going to leave behind? And a lot of times that therapy that they're leaving behind is their suction pump or their nebulizer. Uh, and what this does is this actually puts the patient at risk for a decrease in compliance. Uh, and where Voxin is able to rise to that challenge is when these patients are on Voxin, they actually have all five of these therapies traveling with the patient at all times. Um, and as I, as I was saying earlier, uh, Voxin weighs 70% lighter than all five of those, uh, those devices combined together. So that means you're only transporting one device. Uh, it's only one circuit you need to worry about. It's only one power cord that you need to worry about. Um, it, it truly allows um, increase in mobility. Uh, it, it allows your patients to leave the house on a day-to-day, -day, uh, to travel to your family reunions, uh, uh, to go to the movie theaters, uh, to go to uh, a wrestling match. Uh, it allows patients to no longer be confined uh, to their bedroom and to their house. Uh, another benefit uh, is reduced noise. Um, you know, patients historically, when they're running a ventilator and oxygen concentrator, for you, for you home care clinicians out there and for you caregivers out there, uh, you guys can visualize uh, when you have a portable oxygen concentrator tethered to 15 feet or 10 feet of an oxygen tube because that concentrator is sitting outside of the room because it's so noisy, uh, whereas Voxen's internal oxygen concentrator is up to three times quieter uh, than a traditional concentrator that's on the market. Uh, Voxen's uh, nebulizer is typically two times quieter uh, than traditional uh, uh, therapies that are currently on the market. easy to use operating system. So one of the really nice things uh, that the engineers did at, uh, at Ventec when they were designing Voxin is uh, they actually went out and, uh, and they talked to not only the patients and caregivers but, uh, and medical people, but they also wanted to see how they could minimize and, and make Voxin seamless and easy to use. Uh, so Voxin software uh, and interface and, and, and operating system is designed to work just like your smartphone that you have today. So it helps to reduce uh, the anxiety uh, of operating five different machines, uh, and, and that only benefit that only not only benefits the patient, but it also benefits the caregivers because it reduces that stress of managing all five of those different systems. Uh, and and what we can see is if you're able to manage all five of these different systems uh, in an easy manner, uh, this may help to prevent hospital readmissions by. Uh, being compliant with, with providing all the therapies um, that, uh, that, that, that you have access to. Uh, and then we have patient empowerment. Uh, and and so, so patient empowerment, uh, Voxin makes it easier to administer these therapies. For example, uh, cough therapy takes seconds instead of minutes. Uh, you only have one device and one circuit rather than two separate devices with, with separate circuits. Uh, Voxin will likely save the caregiver time, uh, and by making the therapies faster and easier to use, uh, we're able to, uh, we think that you're able to increase the uh, compliance uh, with doing uh, all the therapies. 
uh, patient comfort, uh, and uh, uninterrupted ventilation is one of the biggest ones uh, where you no longer need to disconnect from your life support machine and hook up to a separate device, uh, which can be uh, not only labor intensive, but it can also be time consuming. Um, Vox and patients always remain connected to that life support machine while they're doing uh, all five therapies. Reduce the risk uh, of infection. Uh, you know, anytime you open a circuit up, you're always opening up that circuit to, to who knows what. Uh, so, so Voxin allows you to not have to uh, break the circuit, uh, which, which, which uh, decreases, uh, can possibly decrease the, the risk for a bacterial infection. But it also, uh, by not having to break the circuit, you're also minimizing uh, the patient disconnections that could possibly happen. Um, and then the last one is increase in patient compliance. Uh, as I said earlier with the, um, the therapy tracker, so Voxin is gonna monitor all five of those therapies. Uh, so you're no longer just monitoring ventilation data, but you're actually monitoring your oxygen data, you're monitoring the cough therapy data, you're monitoring your suction data, your nebulizer data. Never before uh, has a system been able to monitor all five of those therapies uh, so you can truly holistically track uh, what your, your patient is doing. Uh, and by holistically tracking your patient, uh, you know, you can get ahead and, and see, you know, what changes are happening with your patient uh, so that you can preemptively, uh, you know, manage your patient. Um, and then the other topic about increase in compliance is Voxin just makes it easier to administer care. Uh, and, and, and we're going to go back to the cost therapy that uh, your patients no longer need to disconnect. Uh, it increases the convenience and it may improve patient compliance because the burden uh, to provide uh, cost therapy is, is complete. Uh, each therapy uh, is lessened to provide that, that burden. So then talking about home care reimbursement, and hello everyone, this is Chris Brooks. I'm here in Bothell with Jason, and the managing director at uh, Ventec Life, and definitely wanted to talk through the reimbursement for uh, this device. So as Jason uh, did a really nice job outlining kind of the clinical benefits of integrated respiratory care, uh, there's also now something called integrated uh, billing. So we have one new billing code for Voxin, um, CMS came out with this code, it went into effect January 1 of this year. It's E0467, so previously ventilators were E0465 or 66 for invasive and non-invasive ventilation. Um, CMS decided that this was totally new and different and created a new code, E0467, for a multifunction ventilator. The definition of a multifunction ventilator, according to the rule that they put forth, is a ventilator that integrates a portable oxygen concentrator, a cough stimulator, suction, and nebulizer. So Voxin is the only device that integrates all five of those therapies and thus qualifies as a multifunction ventilator. Um, so then the question is, well, who is eligible for a multifunction ventilator? Uh, very simply, any patient who qualifies under the current protocol for a ventilator and one of the four other therapies, oxygen, cough, suction, or neb, would then qualify for a multifunction ventilator. So if you qualify for a ventilator and a portable suction pump, you would then qualify under E0467 for Voxin. You would then just bill one code and get one device. Um, current ventilator users uh, who currently own their devices, uh, so if they own cough suction, neb, or oxygen, meaning they've used it beyond uh, the cap period, so 13 months for cough, suction, and NEB, and 36 months, months for oxygen, currently are excluded from being able to get Voxin under E0467. Uh, like, uh, however, unless they've owned those devices for over five years. So essentially, uh, if you're a new ventilator patient or you're within uh, that time frame of less than 13 months for cough, suction, or NEB, or less than 36 months for oxygen, you would be eligible for Voxin, uh, and if you're beyond the five-year useful life of any of those devices, you would be eligible for Voxin as well. Uh, we are working with CMS and expect them to come out with some clarification for the same but similar, which is precluding those patients who already own one of those other therapies. Uh, we expect CMS will come out with some clarifying guidance on this 
um, within the next month or so at the most. Uh, that was not their intent when they created this uh, law. They wanted, obviously, uh, this device to be accessible by folks and didn't want them to be punished for already being on a ventilator or using a nebulizer for a period of time. Um, so we expect that this will, uh, this same but similar will no longer be an issue, but for now, um, those folks who already own these devices would be precluded from being able to switch over uh, to Voxin. Uh, there is a provision in the CMS guidelines for new devices that same but similar doesn't apply, uh, and that is what we expect uh, CMS to come out with their clarifying guidance to kind of update the, um, uh, the billing agencies. Um, that reimbursement is monthly, month over month. It's actually higher than a traditional portable ventilator. Um, the ventilator or the multifunction ventilator, Voxin, is still classified under the frequent and substantial servicing. Um, all of the normal 10,000 hour preventative maintenance and uh, process through a DME uh, would still apply. Um, also still applicable, CMS came out and clarified this uh, earlier this year after they implemented E0467. They clarified that a backup ventilator, although it cannot be called a backup ventilator, but just as you can today make the medical necessity for a bedside ventilator and a portable ventilator, say one on the back of a wheelchair, the same could be applied for Voxin. So you could bill E0467 for bedside and E0467 for a mobile ventilator that would go on the back of your, your wheelchair. So in many ways, you could potentially have redundancy across not just your ventilator, but across all five therapies uh, in the home. Um, this is covered by Medicare. All of the state Medicaids are beginning to adopt this code as well, as well as private insurance. Um, it, uh, we should note that E0467 has been in effect as of January 1, so it's just over seven months old, and insurance companies are uh, learning more and more, and uh, we have a very active team that is proactively speaking with all of the state Medicaid directors as well as the large insurance companies and uh, working with all of the DME providers to work through uh, any kinks in billing a new device. Uh, the good news is that um, this code exists. It provides higher reimbursement. Um, there is a precedent for Medicaid and private insurers for adopting it. Um, and if you happen to be one of the first uh, people who are billing E0467 for your particular provider, uh, we can help you through that process. The key thing to know when you're talking to your uh, doctor or your DME, and I'll go ahead and um, change this slide, we do have more information at ventechlife.com on our website. If you go backslash E0467, we have a whole page on reimbursement and eligibility, as well as a checklist for the documentation required for the me medical necessity of the eligibility of Voxin. Again, it's gonna follow exactly the same protocol today. So if you qualify for a ventilator and you qualify for a nebulizer or you uh, qualify for a ventilator and you qualify for a cough assist, et cetera, you would be qualified then for a multifunction ventilator. Um, key to know that, as Jason mentioned, Voxin grows with you, grows with the disease progression. Uh, so it's uh, helpful to get Voxin early. Um, so talk to your doctor, talk to your DME provider about Voxin as an early item um, as you get to the point where you need a ventilator. And we always encourage that to be a proactive conversation that happens early before it becomes an emergency situation. Um, the good news with Voxin is that you're not gonna have to take home a bunch of complicated equipment. You can take home one device and that device will grow with you as you need different therapies. It will give you access to cough therapy, which otherwise you might not have had that additional device, or uh, there might have been a lot of anxiety between disconnecting from your life support device to use uh, cough assist. Now all of that is built in, and it will grow with you as uh, the disease progresses. Um, more information, video training, we have a sample prescription, uh, comparable ventilation modes on our website, uh, you can always email info at ventechlife.com. Um, we are also partnering uh, with ALS uh, nationally uh, to create some additional respiratory education, uh, not just about Voxin, but about the disease progression and what that looks like for respiratory care, both invasive, non-invasive, mouthpiece ventilation, um, and uh, excited to roll out some of those resources, uh, refreshing a lot of the resources that ALS Association has already provided uh, in the past. So 
Um, definitely see that there have been a few questions in the chat, and uh, we still have some time left in the hour. We are more than happy to answer any and all questions that you have. If you want to go ahead and share those in the chat, we will call them out and answer them for the group. Great. Thanks so much, uh, Jason and Chris. Really appreciate that wealth of information about this new category of ventilators. And we do have several questions, so uh, we will get right to those. Um, coming up quickly, can I use this with a mask at night and a sip and puff during the day? Uh, the answer to that question is 100% absolutely you can. Uh, so Voxen is designed to provide the best in class invasive, non-invasive, and mouthpiece, which is your sip and puff ventilation. And so you actually, it's uh, hard to see because we couldn't do a demo on this um, uh, webinar, but there are actually three presets that you can pre-program and preset. So you could have your, and you could even name it if you want, you could call it day and night. And you can have one set up for a mask and the other set up for, excuse me, mouthpiece ventilation and be able to seamlessly switch back and forth. Great, okay. great, excellent. Another question that's similar to that, um, can I use this machine if I need a BiPAP and a cough assist, but I don't need a suction machine right now? A absolutely. Again, so that's, that's when we were talking about Voxin grows with uh, patients across their disease uh, process. Uh, so you asked for ventilation or BiPAP and a cough assist, correct? Yes. So Voxin provides those therapies so that if they did not need the suction, they wouldn't have to have the suction. Yep. So the qualification is if you qualify for a ventilator and you qualify for one of the four additional, you then get access to a Voxin. You still then would need a prescription to use any of those other therapies or the DME prior to giving you the device would lock out any of those therapies that you don't need. Excellent, excellent, great. Then uh, questions are rolling in then. Uh, one question was, is this powered by electricity or a battery with a follow-up question about how long that battery might last? Uh, so to answer the question, um, it's powered by both. Um, <clears throat> certainly uh, you can be powered by electricity uh, and then at that point, you're just running on the electricity coming from whatever source is providing that electricity. Uh, <clears throat> Voxen also provides you uh, uh, a couple of uh, feedbacks, letting you know that you are connected to electricity. Uh, that's whether there's a, a little indicator, a charge status indicator, as well as um, an icon letting you know that you are plugged into electricity. Uh, and then when we talk about batteries, uh, so Voxen has three onboard batteries. So we have two removable rechargeable batteries and we have an internal battery. Uh, and so when we look at these batteries, uh, that gives us about nine hours of battery life on ventilation alone. If someone is running the ventilator and the oxygen concentrator, you get about six hours of battery life. If uh, someone's at the movie theater at a baseball game and they're running all five therapies, high minute ventilation, a lot of cough assist, a lot of suction, you get about three hours of battery life. But to take this question a little bit further is uh, Voxen also provides, uh, we also have a, a, a power chair adapter, so you could connect to your power chair and run off uh, the battery, the power chair provided by the battery. Yep. Soon we'll have an AC adapter for the car, and we do have an external charger to charge an extra set of removable batteries. Uh, the point being is with Voxen and with the onboard battery, as Jason mentioned, the internal batteries and the two removable batteries on the side, you're going to see better battery life with the device itself running all five therapies than you are with any device out there today just running one therapy. And that's, you know, excluding any large external battery packs uh, that some of these other devices require. Um, I did see a question specifically about, um, you know, length of time of a patient uh, if they uh, maybe private paid with a ventilator, but uh, are now looking to make a switch. If you do have any of those specific questions, I would just encourage you to email info at ventechlife.com and give us a little bit more detail, and uh, we can work with you directly uh, through any of those specific billing questions, and we'll definitely uh, work with you to get answers on those. Very good, very good. Thanks so much. Uh, another question came through. Um, is this machine appropriate if I have not yet made a decision about getting a tracheostomy? I think you addressed that earlier, but if you would address that again. 
so, so yes, it is appropriate. So I'd, I'd imagine if, if we talk a little bit further, if uh, you're, you haven't made the decision to get a tracheostomy yet, but you are probably requiring some non-invasive ventilation, so mask ventilation. Um, so again, so Voxen provides uh, non-invasive ventilation, uh, but in order to qualify, like Chris said, you would need to qualify for ventilator, but then you'd also need to qualify with a nebulizer or cough therapy. So you would need one additional therapy to qualify for E0467. Yep. And so I working see, and with you your know, doctor, and, and we're educating physicians across the country about what Voxin is and that it's an option out there, and also what that looks like as you're scripting uh, for these different devices. So I did see another question about somebody who might qualify for cough assist and suction, but doesn't yet need the ventilator. Um, you, you need to have that ventilator prescription to then be able to qualify uh, for Voxin. Uh, again, vent in one of the other four. Uh, so talking with your doctor about what that looks like um, to work with them to get the script for the ventilator and one of the additional four therapies to qualify then for, for Voxin. Um, another frequently asked question that I see in there and just trying to rapid fire so that we get all of these questions before the end of the hour, uh, what happens if one therapy breaks? It is the number one question that we get. I blame the integrated TV VCR. It was a terrible look for integration. The VCR always broke unless you were out of your TV. Um, what is typical with these devices is that you have your ventilator, um, but then you have these other devices that are, you know, suction pump, nebulizer, cheap, $40, $50 uh, devices that have a 4 or $5 pump. It's moving really fast. You think of a suction pump, and uh, it's breaking all of the time. A lot of wear and tear. They're not really effective when they're new. They're breaking frequently. All of the engineering in Voxin, we didn't do anything different. We just made everything more energy efficient, we made it smaller, and we made it work together. And all of those components that we put inside Voxin were all custom parts that we built from scratch to be able to make them more energy efficient and integrated. So the compressor, for instance, that's running uh, the oxygen, the suction, and the neb is a highly over-engineered three-piston compressor designed to a 50,000 hour uh, cycle. Uh, so that's the equivalent of running your nebulizer or your suction pump for four years straight. Uh, so it's really an apples to orange comparison to some of the equipment that you're used to using today. Everything in Voxin is built around keeping the ventilator um, you know, going. At the end of the day, it's a class two life support device, um, but you're not gonna see that wear and tear and breakage uh, at the frequency that you're used to with the separate devices that you see today. Um, you know, I had another question here. Uh, you really had quite a bit of information regarding the technological features of the unit. Um, how is that data downloaded and shared either with the respiratory therapist at the DME company or the physicians at the clinic? Yep, great question. Um, so the good news in Voxin is that, again, we don't just have the ventilator data, but you have data across all five therapies. So you can begin to get a complete picture of the respiratory care of your patient. Currently, you can stick a USB in the back and you can hit export on the screen. It will export all of that information, kind of a chronological timeline of what happened with your patient, when settings changes were made, when therapies were administered, at what settings were those therapies administered, what alarms were you getting. Uh, by the end of summer, we will have the ability to have a comprehensive trending report. So you'll not just get a chronological history, but you'll be able to see over a seven day, 30 day, 90 day window um, how frequently were you doing cough therapy? At what settings? How many cough cycles were you using? Um, how frequently are you doing NEB? Uh, what are your general ventilation alarms? And you can begin to see holistically as you look at the patient, okay, uh, we're doing a lot of cough therapy. We've got some more frequent nebulizers. We've got a lot of additional secretions that we don't normally have. Are we moving towards an infection? And do we need to head that off before it becomes something that's gonna cause a readmission or a hospitalization of the patient. So that's just one example of what you can begin to do with that comprehensive trending. We're very excited about where that's going to go. Um, we'll have the ability for you know, a patient or a DME or a doctor to be able to pull that information via the USB, upload it to um, a site that doesn't require a subscription or anything like that to be able to look at that comprehensive report. And by the end of the year, the ability to remotely pull that information off of Voxin uh, for either a doctor or a DME or a clinician to be able to review uh, remotely for the patient. So a lot of things coming down the line 
um, you know, definitely some of the basic things that folks are used to related to uh, reporting, um, but uh, a lot more exciting, comprehensive reporting looking at that integrated respiratory care. Um, a lot of yeah. questions about cost yeah. as well and DME and kind of um, whether or not Voxin is available. Uh, I definitely encourage you to email info at ventechlife.com. We are bringing on DME partners across the country. Uh, to be completely honest, we're being very picky with the DMEs that we bring on board to make sure that we are working with strong regional DMEs that can provide uh, high quality care that we uh, want to accompany Voxin. Uh, but we will work with you in the state that you're in and connect you with a DME that is providing Voxin and or uh, speak with you to your doctor and your DME about providing Voxin. So, and as a quick follow-up to that, um, we had a question about maintenance, and I know that you addressed it a little bit earlier with regard to quote-unquote backup machines or a second machine, maybe one that you're using at your bedside and the other that you're using on your wheelchair. Um, but if you can address that and then also address um, if the, the access or the availability is, it, is it available to the local, through the local respiratory DME company, are those local therapists providing the uh, instruction and teaching and education and, and follow-up, or are other folks um, providing follow-up or field support? So as far as the backup ventilator, again, you can't call it a backup ventilator, but in the same way that today you can create, uh, the doctor can create the medical necessity for a bedside ventilator and a mobile ventilator, say on the back of your wheelchair, the same applies to E0467. You could have a Voxin bedside under E0467 and also bill for a mobile Voxin on the back of your wheelchair. Um, we are working with DMEs uh, across the country uh, to provide Voxin and would encourage folks to email info at ventechlife.com uh, to let us know where you live in the DME that you work with as well as your prescriber uh, and we can reach out to your prescriber and your DME uh, to talk about providing Voxin. Um, definitely a lot of questions about cost. It is a new device. Um, it is not cost prohibitive and actually the reimbursement does work out well for the DME to be able to make up um, that cost, you actually are seeing a higher reimbursement under E0467 than you are with your typical ventilator. Uh, so it is actually economical for the DME uh, to be able to make that switch and we can have those conversations with the DME to kind of walk them through uh, those finances. Um, I see a question about batteries. Uh, we say up to nine hours of battery. That's including all of the batteries that are on board with Voxin. So there are no, there are no external battery packs or um, additional batteries, you have the internal battery and the two removable batteries on either side. Uh, combined with all three of those batteries, you're going to get up to nine hours of battery on ventilation only. As J Jason mentioned, ventilation and oxygen, you're going to see about six hours. Heavy usage of all five therapies, really high settings, you're going to see three to four hours of battery. Great, great. Um, another question, does my doctor have to order this machine specifically? Yes, they, they don't have to order it specifically. So they could order a ventilator and a cough assist, and you could work with your DME to then um, to bill for it and get Voxin. It certainly doesn't hurt for the doctor to say multifunction ventilator on the script. And we actually have a sample prescription on our website in the resources section, um, and that is a you could even print that off and bring that to your doctor, or it's an easy fillable PDF if you emailed that to your doctor kind of walk them through how they can script for it. But certainly, uh, you don't have to have a script for Voxin. You could just have a script for a ventilator and one of the four other therapies, and you would then qualify. Uh, but that certainly helps to make the case a little bit stronger as you're working with your DME partner to provide Voxin if the script from the doctor says Voxin or multifunction mm -hmm. ventilator. Great, great. Um, and you, know, you mentioned this scenario um, earlier. Um, there's a quick question here about someone that just got a cough assist and a suction device. So they're right now just using a cough assist and a suction device, no ventilator. Uh, so it sounds like they're just under that capped rental um, time period. Would that person qualify for a, a Voxin at this time as long as they haven't reached that cap rental period? Correct. As long as they haven't reached that cap rental period and they're now eligible or can get a prescription from the doctor for a ventilator, 
they then would qualify for Voxin. Um, okay, so timing is really important because the cap rental for the cough assistant and the suction device is that 13 months? Correct, yep. So if I you're see. using any of those devices, uh, you definitely want to have the conversation before that 13 month period with your doctor about whether or not it's time to, to look at Voxin as a solution um, you know, to manage your respiratory health moving forward in the disease progression. I see. So right now, if the person was under that cap rental time period and they were in an upcoming need for ventilation, it would make sense to develop a strategic plan to maybe transition over to that before that cap rental period ended. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, um, great, great. So, so strategy is so important. Now, you know, there's um, a couple of folks had a question. It's like, it's great that all these five different things are in one, but what happens if one of the things stops working? Yep, uh, and that's a question that we get uh, very frequently. So, again, everything is built for that ventilator to continue to function. It's still a class two life support device, and uh, that ventilator will continue to function. The engineering inside Voxin is much different than we didn't just take the five traditional devices that exist out there today with the really cheap suction pumps and the really cheap nebulizers and the cheap oxygen concentrators. We didn't just take that existing technology and put it in a box. We re-engineered everything from the inside out to be more energy efficient, to be integrated, and to work together. Uh, and with that, um, have designed internal components like our compressor which are built to that 50,000 hours. So that's the equivalent of running your suction pump or your nebulizer or your concentrator for every day straight for four years, which obviously is uh, far beyond the average usage for those devices. So the devices that you're used to using today, that oxygen suction and neb that are breaking frequently, uh, are not going to be an issue inside Voxen. Um, I also saw another question about competitive bidding. Uh, and it is true that Voxin is not part of competitive bidding, so E0467 is not included in competitive bidding, even though under E0467 you can use both invasive, non-invasive, and mouthpiece ventilation. So again, when the doctor is prescribing it, they're not prescribing um, necessarily invasive, non-invasive, or mouthpiece. They're prescribing a multifunction ventilator, uh, and then, you know, based on the doctor's orders or your conversation with your DME, you can use invasive or non-invasive. I see. I see. So the uh, CMS reimbursement rates are, are different, of course, for non-invasive, invasive, and multifunction ventilators, as well as suction units, caucasus units, uh, oxygen, things of that nature. If someone is in need of ventilation, non-invasive ventilation, and a suction machine and a cough assist, would their out-of-pocket expense be pretty much commensurate with the one unit as with the separate units, or is there a big difference? Yep, so answering that in two ways. So out-of-pocket, if you were just buying these devices straight out, which obviously um, you know, we are not allowed to sell directly to an individual, we have to sell to a DME, it's still class two uh, device. Um, depending on, you know, the price of these devices fluctuates on the time of day and who's buying and how many, uh, but generally the cost of Voxin uh, for a home care model is going to be around that $14,000, so it's going to be commensurate with the cost of all of those individual devices. Um, and then from a reimbursement standpoint, uh, because the reimbursement is about 20% higher than your typical ventilator, uh, you could potentially see maybe $20 more a month, uh, depending on the insurance setup of the individual patient as far as what they might be uh, asked to cover. But it's going to be pretty much on par. And again, you're getting the, the benefit of having the option or the opportunity of all five therapies and the mobility and all of the other benefits that Jason spoke to. Great, great. And I know it seems... Um, a little bit complex when you're talking about five different devices and some are are reimbursed on a cap rental basis, other on a, a longer 36-month basis or even an um, ongoing rental basis. So if, if someone has a question about this, please do access um, the info at Ventec Life. Um, your website, I know, has some additional information about that. 
We are going just a few minutes over time. I do want to be respectful for, for folks' time. Thanks so much for putting your website up there because if anyone has additional questions, please feel free to log on to the website there or to connect with the ALS Association National Office or through your local chapters. You can reach out to your care service coordinator. If they're unable to help you with a specific question, they can reach out to um, other resources and we can get the information that you're looking for. Um, I don't think we have any additional questions here. Many of the questions were similar in nature. We do have a number of folks that are thanking you very much. A lot of information to go over in just an hour, um, but we appreciate you carving time out of your day to, one, share this information with us, and two, for all the folks on the many incoming lines to hear this. Again, this, record, this webinar is being recorded, so within 24 hours you'll be able to find a direct link to the entire recording along with the slide deck at www.alsa.org, or you can reach out to your local uh, ALS Association chapter for access to that. Thank you so much wherever you are across the country. We just got finished with our, our heat wave and now we're rolling into uh, the height of the summer and soon the um, upcoming back to school season. Please be safe with your ventures. If you have any questions, back to Bentech Life or your local ALS Association chapter. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you. Take care, everyone.